right of your screen, Edward Huang, hailing from Canada, playing that Malamar deck. Yeah, and there we see top 32 at Toronto Regionals this year, top 32 at the 2014 World Championships, and then two first place at Canadian Nationals in 2011 and 2014. So definitely a seasoned player, been playing for a while. Yeah, cons consistent finishes, you know, top 32 at Regionals, top 32 at Worlds, two-time Canadian champion. Again, we see that Malamar deck, the Mewtwo GX, the Necrozma, got the Oranguru. Players are set up, and it looks like we're ready to go. Who will advance to the semifinals to meet Tord? Do they even want to? <laughs> it's like, can I, can I just concede now, I guess? Like, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at Jimmy's prizes. Counter catcher, enhanced hammer, double colorless, nothing of note. Doing the same for Edward, that Mewtwo GX is prized. Mimic you in the prizes as well. Yeah, Mimic is a card that's kind of fallen by the wayside as well. Uh, that copycat attack, really useful. Uh, unfortunately, it does not copy GX attacks, um, so it is kind of a little limited, whereas some of the other ones have a more versatile. All right, there's the handshake. Edward is going to start us off. Oranguru active, Inke on the bench, Professor Sycamore. Wow, uh, I think that's two Malamar and he has discarded. one Malamar prized as well, as we saw earlier. Oh man, he's really going to try to look for any recovery. Uh, just the one rescue stretcher in his deck. And not a great place to be uh, before we even consider that the uh, that the other Malamars and the prizes. Here's a mysterious treasure. He's going to learn exactly how bad his prizes are now. Yeah, and if you've been listening to the winner interviews from Jimmy uh, for the few times we've had him on stream, uh, he's very confident against a Malamar deck, especially yeah. one that doesn't play Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, this this is the matchup that he wants. So uh, Jimmy's got to be feeling pretty confident here. Coming off of his back-to-back uh, -to -back top eights at North American Internationals, playing against a positive matchup. Will he advance to the top four? Max Elixir. It does hit the Psychic Energy. He's definitely going to have to rely on those Max Elixirs early game since he discarded those Malamars. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can actually even get the Malamar from the prizes, maybe. Yeah, one of the things about... The Malamar deck is kind of the way these decks are set up, and traditionally the way that they've been set up when there's uh, similar effects like Dynamotor is that, you know, the, you're playing the cards, you're playing the Dawn Wings, the Grozma, un with the understanding that you will have Malamar set up, right? Not all of these cards are kind of powerful in a vacuum. They're powerful when you can accelerate two or three energy a turn to them. And when you don't have that, you can really end up with a kind of a clunky deck that doesn't really do anything. Yeah. And I am actually mistaken. He does not play the promo Mewtwo, but instead opts for the Lunala, Prism Star, and the Mimikyu. All right, so we've got some different text there as he passes back to Jimmy Pendarvis. Wimpod in the active position. Zorua, Ultra Ball coming down now. But this is going to be anything like Jimmy's other turns. We're going to see a Tapu Lele Wonder Tag for Bridget. Fill the bench. Classic uh, Zorark deck move, just needing to power out as many Zoroarks as possible, and that looks like what is happening. He's going to go ahead and take three Zoruas. Hey, you got to utilize Bridget while you can before she rotates out of the standard format. Yep, there we go. Wonder Tag, Bridget, the optimal turn one play. Bench is full. <laughs> Zoroas as far <laughs> as the eye can Zorark. see. And it'll be interesting to see if he actually chooses to retreat the Wimpod. Remember, a Wimpod's ability, Wimp Out, gives it free retreat only if it's your first turn. So you said this, uh, Jimmy wanted this matchup. It was positive for him. What, what makes him think that? Why is that the case? So uh, two of the big attackers for Malamar are weak to dark, the Dongwing and the Necrozma GX. Uh, and it's also how they really maneuver around uh, getting energy to their attackers as well. You can invasion uh, the guy that you just discarded all the energy from the regular Necrozma, charge up more, and then just retreat with the Floatstone, attack again. Well. <laughs> Doesn't really have access to that. And yeah, as I'm talking, he hits the rescue yeah, stretcher. Big play from Edward here. Uh, just plays that rescue stretcher, realizing he needs to get those Malamars back in his deck and hopefully back on the board to actually get something going here. Lucky to hit that rescue stretcher, uh, bringing him back into the game. I don't, I don't want to see what that game would be like with those uh, Malamar in the discard pile the whole time. Yeah, so along with the Dawn Wings being weak, uh, all of your other attackers are fighting against Zorark's resistance to Psychic. Uh, so it's really just kind of like, 
my matchup's not that good. Like, I'm going to miss a lot of numbers. And that's why you see him play a card like Marshadow GX. Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag for Edward here. Let me go ahead and take a Professor Sycamore, get rid of the cards in his hand, draw seven new ones, and try to uh, set up something that uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, beat the potential four Zorark GXs coming down on Jimmy's side of the field next turn. Yeah, uh, did he, did Jimmy actually have the field blower to get rid of the float yep. zone? That was insane. Yeah. Yeah, field blower, then he retreated uh, to, you know, while he still can and pass the turn back. There's a Sycamore. Again, not really putting much Psychic Energy in the discard. One of the staples for this deck. It's how you get going. Floatstone, one of the first cards to Malamar in his hand right, as well. Malamar's went back in the deck, and now they're back in his hand. Now they're back on the board. Max Elixir, his top six cards. Is a, is he a basic Psychic? We do. We do. So he does have the attachment for turn. Uh, ops to Ben. Well, uh, place it on the Tapu Lele. I think he has two uh, Psychic in the discard pile already. Oh, okay. For the Malamar, so he's just kind of spreading it around, saying, I already have this attack if I wanted. I might as well diversify my threats. Replacement Floatstone for the Oranguru. All right, double Psychic Recharge. Tapu Lele will take a knockout on Zoro. Remember, it doesn't deal weakness or resistance. So Zoro, with that right. Psychic Resistance... Just like, ah, I can't do anything. Aggro Lele as Edward takes the first prize, knocking out a Zorark. You see a Lele mirror match in the active position. Zorark off the top, and, and an N. Yeah, and as the lone card in Jimmy's hand. Uh, drawing that Zorark was pretty sweet there. All right, here we go. This is kind of what we've been talking about with a lot of the Zorark decks is, all right, I'm going to end. I get six cards. Well, actually, I can turn it into eight. Oh, I hit another Zorark. I hit another Ultra Ball. I hit another Evo Soda. Look what I can do. Yeah, and if you don't do that, it, it feels pretty bad. Because, <laughs> like, Mike, you know your deck can. Exactly. Six new cards for Jimmy. Only five for Edward here. And down a card, but, you know, the, the advantage that Malamar gives you is sometimes worth that, just being as aggressive as possible. Well, uh, the way Edward has set up his first few turns, it's pretty great. Tapu Lele is a huge threat just because it hits for two-hit knockouts very consistently against Glycepod and Zoroarks. And if you just don't focus on Tapu Lele, it can really get out of hand. And then if you do focus on it, well, that Necrozma on the bench is just going to come up and knock out anything. It's a pretty tough situation, but we see double Evo Soda into double Zorark GX on Jimmy's side of the board. So this is what we were talking about. He's going to be trading into everything he could ever want. Jimmy's doing his best Tord impression here in top eight. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to have the complete lock like Tord did exactly, but uh, I don't think anyone's going to turn down three trades either. And I actually see double puzzle time in his hand as well. Uh, doesn't, I don't know if there's much in his discard he really needs with those at this point. What is Jimmy trying to do this turn? Obviously, he's going to be trading. He's going to set up as much as he wants, basically. But what is he looking to do uh, this turn as far as actually you know, putting pressure on Edward goes? So he's already played his supporter for the turn. Uh, he found the double colorless on one of the last trades. Uh, that's definitely where you start, just because Tapu Lele double colorless, 100 damage on your opponent's Tapu Lele, we're in business. And having the three Zorark on the bench, it does help him out for this long game. but. He's staring down a pretty scary field from Edward here. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and try to eliminate some of that field, maybe by puzzle of timing back the parallel city. Going to put uh, Edward down to only three bench Pokemon. Yeah, uh, pu uh, parallel city is one of the reasons I kind of shied away from Malamar decks in my testing. I was like, this card really hurts, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at the look at the board now. I mean, he's. You know, luckily has those two Malamar and a threat, but I've seen lots of people get stuck with, you know, three Inkays on the board, and, oh, I can't play anymore. Yeah, and one uh, important thing to note is discarding the Ranguru. Turning also... on the counter catcher too. Whew. The early knockout, wow. But uh, discarding the Ranguru also discarded a second Floatstone from Edward. And a Floatstone's one of the cards that you really try to utilize, be, uh, especially with your Necrozma GX as an attacker. Exactly, and there's a knockout for Jimmy. That uh, early aggressive play by Edward turned on his countercatcher. He's able to take care of that Malamar. And that's really, I think, uh, 
so, you know, when you were just saying how everything's so weak to Zorark and all the attackers are, you know, just pitiful against Zorark, but when, when Jimmy feels like he can afford to just kind of take out the Malamars, not worry about anything else, it just it has to feel so bad. Yeah, so basically, you're playing against the Malamar deck and you're playing Zorark. Uh, you can try to outlast their big attackers, try to, like, take knockouts on their attackers, but that's not the game plan, because game plan, as long as they have Malamar, and you end them to a low number, as long as they just draw an attacker, they'll have the knockout. But if you go for the Malamars like Jimmy's doing, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll sacrifice my first few cards. You'll get that one big attack. But after that, I don't think you can attack for the rest of the game. Yeah, exactly. It's just like as we talked about uh, on, on uh, Edward's first turn, when we thought things were going to go horribly wrong for him, a lot of these cards just you know, aren't inherently powerful without being able to attach multiple energy a turn. So if you eliminate the Malamar, it's going to be a big game as we see the Tabu Lele on Jimmy's side get knocked out two more prizes for Edward. Yeah, so going down to three prizes now, but if you look at the board, if Jimmy has another way to take a knockout on the Malamar, Edward's just going to be left with the one in his hand, and that really doesn't charge up attackers that efficiently. Yeah, Zork with double colorless active now. Here is a... Enhanced Hammer getting traded away. Oh, we see a Puzzle of Time and a Double Colos off that trade. Uh, definitely looking for another puzzle here. Does he grab it? He look, drew two cards and now he's looking through his discard pile, so uh, usually a Telltale Sign. That he yeah, has yeah, yeah. We were saying uh, how many cards in your hand is a Telltale Sign of Delinquent. Definitely uh, after you trade, draw two cards and then look through your discard. It's a pretty big tell. Considering an Ultra Ball here, getting rid of a Zorark and a Rainbow Energy. Yeah, he also does have access to Mew EX as well. Um, one thing that kind of hurts this, uh, like, just Psychic-based Malamar deck is all the cards that people are attacking for Buzzwall also kind of hurt you. Makes sense. You get a little extra advantage there. Ultra Ball finds the Glycopod. Windpod is going to evolve. A field of Stage 1s for Jimmy Pendarvis. Not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. It'll be interesting to see if he actually has Grass Energy Guzma. That could take a knockout on the Malamar on the bench. It looks like he only has a double colorless in his hand it's right now. I think that's the only energy he has. So he's considering he has one more trade left, I believe. Yep. That's... He actually discards the Glyspot, but draws the Grass Energy. No Guzma, though. Definitely not what he exactly what he was looking for. Yeah, but he is real in no real threat of getting knocked out next turn. So he can kind of play it a little safe. Yeah, he's been putting Edward off Balamar. Two energy on the uh, Tapu Lele GX on the bench are the only energy on the field. There's that Mew you were talking about coming down with a double colorless on it. Yeah, he actually uh, threw the Mew off like the second trade or something. It was, it was pretty sick. A right, Mew 2 to fill the bench and then a Cynthia. Six new cards for Jimmy giving up on the uh, Guzma Dream. Drew all the cards he could. It's going to play the old-fashioned way and draw six. Now he's just really looking for a Floatstone. Being able to save that double colorless on the active Zorark uh, would definitely help seal the game up uh, coming up in the few turns, uh, even though he's still fine with Retreat. Uh, you want to take this knockout on Necrozma, especially since looking at his list, he only plays the one Necrozma GX. Like Jimmy, considering exactly what he wants to do here, his bench is full, supporter has been played, energy has been attached. Cards like Max Potion in his hand aren't going to help him. All right, let's see. Uh, he really is putting a lot of thought, making sure he can do everything he can. And there we go. Retreat with the double colorless brings up the Mew. And we'll see a riotous beating here for 240 damage thanks to weakness. That's two prizes for Jimmy, again, kind of protecting his Zorak, saying, all right, this Mew is going to sand it, is going to fill in for the Zorak, but I'm still going to be able to trade if things go wrong. So here's what I was saying, though. If you kind of leave the Malamars in play, Edward has an opportunity. He could take a knockout here and go down to one prize. He has Ultra Ball. That Mimikyu uh, will be able to copy Riotous Beating. I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think Jimmy wanted to leave the Malamars in play, right? We saw him kind of digging for that Guzma didn't end up hitting and kind of did all he could, but now the Ultra Ball comes down. You know, there's two Pokemon on the bench. We still have one more slot under that Parallel City. I th there's plenty of Psychic Energy in the discard pile. 
It'll be interesting to see what Pokemon he grabs here. Looks for that Giratina. It might just be uh, deciding, okay, I'm going to use this Mimikyu to knock out this Mew. It's only one prize. And then I'm going to discard this Giratina because I'm not going to need it. There's the Giratina in hand. There's the Mimikyu, as you said, on your screen. Kind of a card that hasn't been played as much recently, but very powerful in the right situation. It's going to hit the field. Professor Sycamore saying, oh, we don't need this Giratina. You're not, uh, you're not doing any break shenanigans. Seven fresh cards for Edward. He hits a lot of energy here. And a Floatstone as well. Let's fire off the first Max Elixir. One card he's been really trying to find is Field Blower. Uh, Parallel City, again, just limiting this bench to three really just controls the options that he has for the rest of the game. Yeah, he's actually been pretty, kind of, maybe not lucky this turn, but he's been able to play around it okay. But yeah, he does play two Field Blower. Would love to kind of be able to fill his bench. Second Psychic Recharge. Or that was the first Psychic Recharge, I think, sorry. And I, the Max Elixir onto that Mimikyu. Fully charged up now, ready to copycat. And, and we could just see a retreat and then another Psychic Recharge to the Tapu Lele, trying to keep that energy on it. Attachment from the hand to the Malamar. Spreading out the threats a bit. There's a Psychic Recharge. Also going on the same Malamar. Yeah, uh, this, this is actually great, just because that Mewtwo on the bench, uh, well, actually, it does have 130 HP. <laughs> I was about to say Malamar can hit for weakness, but it only hits for 120 damage. Almost, and there's a knockout. Like you said, Edward taking two prizes, going to just a single prize remaining. Can Jimmy take three before Edward gets one, two Malamars, Tapu Lele, Mimikyu in the active position? He has that counter catcher in hand, but really needs to deal with this Mimikyu. And yeah. It's kind of an innocuous uh, Pokemon at first glance. You, yeah. you think it's Pikachu, but then... <laughs> right. <laughs> well, now he's put him in a position where, again, you know, we've been talking the whole game about how he wants to knock out the Malamars, but he just kind of can't, aff can't afford to. Now he needs to deal with the Mimikyu. He needs to get it off the board. Um, even th but again, he's, you know, he has a Tapu Lele with an energy on it. That Malamar's almost set up and ready to attack. So uh, Edward's done a good job of kind of diversifying things here and putting Jimmy in a pretty tough spot. And one surprise we could see from Edward next turn is just a Mars Shadow GX if Jimmy decides to attack the Zorg, but it's looking like he's eyeing down first impression this turn. Has the Guzma in hand as well at the first trade? Yeah, trades away the Max Potion. It draws a pair of energy. And grass double colorless energy. Definitely has... Quite a few options. We're debating whether to get rid of that Wimpod or not. Just decides to do it for the second trade of the turn. It's a Floatstone as well. Uh, Floatstone is definitely what he wanted because he did have the option of Guzma up something and then counter catcher the Mimikyu, but you kind of want to save that because you're still going to be down in prizes, so you can save the counter catcher for next turn for game. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's just a lot of resources to use on a play like that. Field blower. And the Parallel City. I actually like this. Uh, one of the ways that Edward can actually take the game is on that Mewtwo. So we might see him play a Parallel City on himself. I believe I saw it in his hand. Oh, no, I was mistaken. And there's the end. Leaving uh, Edward with one single card in his hand. He, Jimmy is going to get a knockout this turn. We saw... Uh, Saw Jimmy come back from a reprise deficit earlier in the tournament. We've seen him, you know, fade a lot of uh, top decks from his opponent. Let's see what he can put together here. Yeah, and this is definitely the biggest weakness for Malamar as a deck. Uh, just another reason why Zor uh, tends to be favored in these matches, too, is that, well, yeah, I can end you down to one or two. Uh, if you don't have your attackers on board, you're going to be really put behind. And meanwhile, I can end myself down to one or two and still draw six cards. Yeah, one Orangaroo in Edward's deck, but nothing like the Octillery, no Zoroarks, obviously. Nothing to really have that consistent draw power. So he's going to be stuck with this one card in hand. If Jimmy is going to trade yet again. Edward finally looked at the card. Uh, it's going to need to be something just to try to take the knockout here. Right, first impression going to be a knockout. Jimmy goes down to two prizes, just one GX knockout, 
will win the game for Jimmy Pendarvis. Malamar moves to the active position for Edward. Draws the card, looks at it, and then goes into the tank. Not a good sign. Yeah. Only two cards in hand. So it's pretty hard just because he kind of needs two things here. He, he needs an uh, attacker, another energy, and I guess three, another, like a Guzma. All right, he's going to get to draw five cards here. Not too bad of a setup. A bunch of energy. He gets a Mewtwo GX. Uh, probably the GX attack of choice for the deck. Just a straight 200 damage with Psy Strike GX. Uh, although that is 10 short of knocking out this Bly Spot. It is indeed insulting the discard pile of Jimmy Pendarvis. Looks like maybe uh, Edward was considering if he wanted to kind of do a Guzma play there because that was the other card in his hand, but just decided, oh, no, I just need to draw the cards. I need, like you were saying, he needs multiple things. He just needs so many cards that he can't afford to try to get tricky with a Guzma. This is a very important turn. Could essentially just decide the game. Uh, Pendarvis does need a little bit of help to try to take those last two prizes on that Tapu Lele. But essentially, it only comes down to double colorless choice band counter catcher. And we know he has two of those in his hand at least. Mewtwo GX on the board. Psychic recharge going to attack. Uh, attached to it. Is that just the one energy from the psychic recharge? Just the one. He has one in hand as well. Looks like he's uh, debating where that goes. Second psychic recharge. He's going to go on to the Tapu Lele GX. So it's going to be really risky if he decides to attack with this Tapu Lele, just because that is Jimmy's goal to victory right now. Uh, it's probably the easiest Pokemon for him to knock out. And he's just going to go ahead and pass the turn. He goes ahead and reads the uh, Mewtwo just seeing exactly oh, what's going on. And there's the double, double puzzle. puzzle. That will seal the game here. He's actually going for... Uh, the, the flashy play of Mew Guzma double colorless to knock out the Mewtwo. There's the Mew. Attaches the double colorless. There's the Guzma on the Mewtwo. That's going to be a knockout, and Jimmy Pendarvis takes game one after being at a two prize deficit. This one had one prize, two cards in hand. Drew, Lily drew, drew a bunch of cards and could not get there. Jimmy Pendarvis, is he unstoppable? Yeah. Uh, Edward there was 10 damage of taking the game away. Uh, Mewtwo just not enough, uh, no choice bands in his deck to actually increase his damage. So he's really just, there There was not really much he could have drawn there. You yeah, know, he just, uh, you know, he had outs, but that uh, double, uh, double puzzle of time sealed up the game for Jimmy Pendarvis. And you know, this is the matchup he wants to play, right? He's been saying, I, I can beat this, I'm confident against this, it doesn't matter, and that, you know, all things considered, that was pretty easy for Jimmy. There was one turn there where things were looking a little a little shaky. Maybe he could maybe uh, Edward could have put something together, but Jimmy was victorious, 1-0, one, oh, one game away from moving on to the semi-finals here at the North American International Championship. Yeah, you saw him and his accomplishments. He's been just so consistent over these past two seasons of Pokemon. Top 16, both years. And he's looking to just put that big, big win on his resume. Yeah, absolutely. The top eight at the International, this very event last year, and then the top eight at Worlds really, uh, I think, kind of pushed him over the top of like, wow, okay, this, you know, we, we always knew Jimmy was great, obviously, but once you get those tops in the major events like that, uh, you just, you know, become on another level, and then he's just done it again the, the, the next try he has. All right, seven cards for both players. Edward needing to stay alive in this tournament. They need to win two games before Jimmy can win one. No mulligans. Active Pokemon are set up. Prizes are being set out. Looks like a 1-1 Zorark, a parallel city in the prizes. That could be important here. Meanwhile, two psychics for Edward. A couple of psychics and some trainers, and we are off for game two of the quarterfinals of the North American International Championship. Edward will be going first this time. A pair of Inkes and an Orangaroo on the bench. Looks like he's considering where to attach. Yeah, uh, his starting hand needed a lot of help off the top of the deck. An Ultra Ball or Mysterious Treasure would have been great. Just, but instead, he drew a Malamar. He just attaches, passes Jimmy Pendarvis with, again, the start he wants. Bridget into Zora, Zora, uh, Wimpod. 
Unsure what the rest of his hand looks like, but he just confidently slammed that Bridget on turn one. Exactly what these Zorak decks need. They just need a critical mass of these uh, basics that can turn into stage ones. Yeah, uh, honestly, I think if you have the Bridget in your hand, is there never not a time you play it turn one with Zorak? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, and granted, Edward's hand could be kind of an innocuous where he might just have double Malamar Sycamore. Jimmy doesn't know. Uh, he still has to go with the consistent play here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so Edward's hand right now is uh, Psychic, Psychic, Malamar. He's going to drop to four, be able to play the Malamar attach. You know, he's going to have some Rangaroo draw there. Oh, Lunala Prism Star off the top. Again, not what you want to see. We might just see, yeah, okay, just another attach and then instruct here. Two cards. No! He does have a Max Elixir. Could be pretty good, but it'd be putting that Donwings Necrozma in danger. But no whiff. It actually misses. Left with a lone basic energy. After turn two, he's used his Instruct. No supporters in hand. One Malamar on the board. Oh, no. This could be dangerous. Jimmy has Evo Soda Guzma in his hand. He could take the Rangaroo out next turn. It just if he decides to go for it or not. There's the retreat from... There's an invasion, rather, going to that Lunala Prism Star. Another card we see in all of the decks that's going to end up active at the end of the turn, it looks like. Yeah, maybe he still has the Psychic Recharge. Yeah, just to think what he wants the Psychic Recharge to. And uh, Jimmy's hand is looking really good right now. So the pass the turn back. All right, so this is Zorark off the top as well. All right, Zorark GX. Going to go ahead and trade. We know he has access to another one via that Evo Soda. Honestly, I think you just go for the Glide Spot. Like you, you have to sense that your opponent is stumbling here. Uh, he's used a Rangaroo to try to draw out of it, not play the supporter each time he's instructed. And... This, this has to just be a huge, huge target on a Ranger right now. All right, the Lice Pod comes down. Choice Band. Looks like we are going to see a Cynthia. Wow, okay. So opting just for more consistent, try to get set up. He probably feels that, well, my matchup against this deck is great anyway. As long as I get set up. So why not just get set up? Sure, sure. I think that's a, that's a line you can take. If, if you think your matchup is, uh, you know, very... Uh, favored towards you, then, you know, why take a, a play that's worse in the long run for an early advantage when, even if uh, Edward drives out of this, Jimmy believes that he is uh, likely to win. Fresh six cards here for Jimmy. See that delinquent as well. Uh, double colorless, too. That glide spot's going to be a huge threat in these coming turns. Another Zoro are going to hit the bench. Potential for three Zorark GX in the near future for Jimmy Pendarvis. Double colorless on the Zorark that's already on the field. Yeah, I don't and see a flow stone, turn though. back. No way to move that Tapu Lili out of the active. What did he draw? Another, another Psychic. Energy. All right, instruct for one. Is it a supporter? Well, last time when he had a dead hand, he slow rolled the supporter, so I just never know. A Guzma, it is a supporter, but not, not one exactly you want to see. What he was looking for. All right, and then Lunala Prism yeah, Star, Full Moon Star to attach uh, Psychic Energy from your discard for each opponent's Pokemon in play. And you can attach it anywhere. Seems to attach to itself there. First trade gets rid of a Bridget. Plays the Ultra Ball, eyeing down another Zorark here. And remember, this Lunala star, Prism Star is weak to dark as well. Uh, could be knocked out just by a simple retreat of the Tapu Lele. Okay, the Ultra Ball actually finds Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, into Guzma. Maybe he's going for that play you described. Maybe he's decided now it's time. Yeah, uh, well, there's so many options he could do here. Uh, he could take out the Dawn Wings, uh, really get rid of the only attacker on the board take out the Malamar, and then take out the Rangaroo, and he opts for the Dawn Wings. He just wants to get this game over fast and move to the top four. Yep, two prizes 
for Jimmy Pendarvis, pushing his advantage here. The top of Edward's deck has not been kind to him. What is this turn? A lily. Yeah. All, All right. right. Something to work with. This uh, almost saved him. Maybe a little bit of a tease last game. But it, it is something, at least. going to stop to... It, it is very awkward, though, because to maximize the cards he draw with Lily, he's going to want to try to attach his energy somewhere, but there's not really a good attacker to attach it to. He doesn't really want to commit it anywhere, and I think that's what he's thinking about, too, is, okay, well, I do have the Psychic Recharge up. I have the Psychic in my hand. Where are these going to go? Yeah, and the Lunala Prism Star attacks for four Psychic Energy. It's such a big commitment, and especially against a deck like Zork Lyspot, you're not taking knockouts with that card. I mean, you, you, you can attach to it. You know, it does attack, but it's such a heavy commitment. It's a huge liability, but I think that's what we're going to see. Psychic Recharge, attach from hand. Right. Uh, he does have a couple options. He could choose to even just Guzma. Very deliberate with his actions. That's what he's choosing to do. Bring up the Glycopod. Lunala. Instruct for one. All right, there's Double another Malmar. Malmar. So things are starting to look up a little bit. Uh, kind of some sort of a game here from Edward in game two. Let's see a Psy Storm for, is that 140, I believe? Yeah, 140. 20 times the number of damage, or 20 times the number of energy everywhere on the board on both sides. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, good. Guild Blower, his own choice ban. We see this play a lot from Fabian earlier on in the tournament with his Garboders, just Guild Blower, the Floatstone, and then use all my cards. Now he's just really, I need a Floatstone, because I can take a knockout with Zorak right now. Right, let's see, does, does he find what he's looking for in this fresh seven cards? He does find a double colorless, so if anything, he could try to retreat. He also has that parallel city as well, along with a few trades. Oh, yeah, don't, never count out the trades. It's like Evo Soda is going to find another Zor GX. Jimmy looking through his deck, thinking, okay, how many, how many of my outs are in here? What exactly am I looking for? And it looks like that's an Ultra Ball coming down. Or yet another Zor GX, so all three in play. Bench is full. Will this card ever not be good? Probably not. I don't know. But stranger things have happened, right? Yeah. All right. Rezor can play, staring down a couple Malamar and Orangaroo and Lunala Prism Star. No. Lunala actually adds a kind of an interesting element to the deck. You don't see it in all the lists, but it's not really doing a whole lot here. I guess it is technically applying pressure. Yeah, 140 damage against the Glide Spot is nothing to laugh at. Uh, definitely something that's very good at just trying to keep going in the game. Right, I think that was the last trade for Jimmy there. Attaches a double colorless. I'm going to go ahead and play that parallel city. So kind of lock Edward to yeah, those three. He's just going to actually retreat. Uh, Crossing Cut GX does not take the knockout. Uh, 160 HP is 10 over what Lysopod can do since it's a non-GX or EX Pokemon. Three prizes remaining for Jimmy Pendarvis. Just need to take three more to advance to the top four here. Can he do it? Or and can Edward put something together? And again, Edward has two of the Psychic Energy in his hand and a Lily. He'd want to play the Psychic Energy to maximize his draw power, but he needs an attacker right now. Four new cards. Does he find an attacker? I think it's a he gear. finds a Rescue Stretcher. Uh, but I think the only thing in his discard, or he doesn't even have the Lunala Prism in this card. It's but, in the loss. Yeah, he has right the Necrozma. Oh, the Dawn Wings, but staring yeah. down three Zora, yeah, I mean, that's it's not just, what you want to see. Yeah, exactly. Man, this, this hand is not looking good right now. He's drawn all of his energy. Four in hand, four in the discard. He has, what, three left? Another Inke. Hitting the bench, going to attach the Malamar, similar thing we saw him do last game. Double Psychic Recharge, it looks like. Going in with the Malamar. Uh, it's more just, I think, attaching so you have a way to retreat next turn. Because, uh, again, he's still just trying to find his attackers. And just passes the turn back. Jimmy Pendarvis, so close here. Three prizes remaining. Edward has been unable to put anything together this entire game. And looking, looking, look at, just look at the difference in board states. 
Yeah. It doesn't even seem fair. Uh, I mean, anytime I look across uh, to my opponent and they have three Zorog GX in play, I always think it's unfair. Is it another trade getting rid of a Zorua? It's like, can I borrow one of your Zorogs? Yeah, and of course, Parallel City, again, just limiting the bench. So even if he was drawing stuff, he couldn't even play it down right now. Like he was buying up the built-up Malamar. He's going to go ahead and go in with... Oh, nope, just retreating back to the Zorark. Taking the knockout. Two prizes are going to remain after this turn for Jimmy Pendarvis. That's the knockout. I'm oh, going to go ahead and attach a rainbow first. Yeah, so I was wondering why the rainbow was in here and talking with a few people. They're like, oh, yeah, well, Mew EX can now copy essentially anything. Uh, have you ever been dangerous rogue by a Mew EX? <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Inke moved into the active position. Once again, Edward just unable to really put anything together. Rescue Treacher Guzma, a bunch of energy in his hand. I mean, what, what can he even do here? Just get another Malamar? Yeah, so he's getting this Malamar, but if he evolves it, that means two retreat. And having to attach for the turn, he won't really be able to set up a three energy attacker if he even can draw anything with Instruct. I don't think he can. It's like double Psychic Recharge coming down. He's taking some time to think, making sure he's deliberate with his actions. Both on that. Oh, right. we're going a Rangaroo beatdown on that Glycopod on the bench, trying to get any Guzma. sort of action here in this game. All right. Struck before the action comes. Surprisingly, I think I've seen this Rangaroo attack almost just as much as the other Rangaroo. It's a decent attacker. There's a knockout. All right, two prizes for Edward. Can't, is that enough? And, you know, getting rid of the Glycopod. Yeah, another energy from his prizes, and uh, at least he got an Ultra Ball. Just what he wanted. All right, trading away a Zorark is Jimmy, and full of options. Yeah, you have to think about it, though. Like, so you do this Desperation Knockout on the Glycopod. All Jimmy needs is a bench Pokemon. You can take the Knockout on a Rangaroo, and then next turn just wins with almost anything. Yeah, he's, a, he's at one prize. At that point, any, uh, any knockout will get there. He does have that fifth bench Pokemon. It's a Mew EX attaches a double colorless to the backup Zorark. Yeah, uh, it's only a matter of time, folks. All right, there's the knockout. One more draw left for Edward. One more turn. What can he put together, or does Jimmy just have the check mark? Draws, looks, does have Ultra Ball. Field Blower, getting rid of some, <laughs> so many energy in his hand that do not need to be there. He is eyeing down that Marshadow GX, one card that is for the Zorark matchup, but has been completely missing from these games for Edward here. We've been seeing it come down. He's going to go ahead and take a look at Jimmy's discard pile before he decides what to take in a really tough spot. And again, just like we were talking about in the last match between uh, toward an Aaron, you know, you gotta play your outs right. Even, even, even if maybe you have no outs, you gotta, you gotta give yourself the best chance you can. So honestly, I think the one way Edward will win this game, okay. he has to tapu lele, yep. uh, get an N because Jimmy has double puzzles in his hand, and then get Marshadow and try to uh, use Don Wing's GX attack, but. He opts to go for the sick mark because remember he still needs a lot of cards, and this is basically hoping. I hope you don't have Guzma. All right there's the field lord getting rid of the stadium, so he'll be able to fill his bench as much as he wants. Two more energy, hit the discard pile off of that professor. And more Jimmy, Jimmy straight away moving the double puzzle of time to the front of his hand. He smells victory in the air. There is not much that Edward can really do this turn. Edward taking a look at his hand, considering his options. Can he survive? Can he deal with both of these Zora threats moving to a position where Jimmy can't just take an easy knockout on anything to seal up the game and the match? So he didn't even draw a way to retreat the Malamar or a third energy to even attach to an attacker right now. Playing a mysterious treasure, but I don't, I don't really think it's going to be relevant. You see, you see the shrug from Edward. Jimmy looks at his hand. 
looks like Don Wings might be the decision here. But again, not really much he could do. The writing's on the wall. Jimmy with double puzzle time in his hand yeah, will take the all. win next turn. And is not disrupted. Any knockout will be the game and the match here. Edward can put whatever he wants onto the board. He can play whatever cards he wants, but I don't think there's any getting out of this. Another Inke. Not going to accomplish a whole lot considering there's one turn left in the game. God, what, what would Jimmy just be feeling right now? Just like, <laughs> just please pass. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like even when you can know you have it, there's always a little bit of tension there in spots like this. Retreating up to the Tapu Lele GX. Passing the turn back, Jimmy Pendarvis, double puzzle of time. Gonna quickly go through his and uh, there is the There's Guzma the and there's the handshake. Jimmy Pendarvis advances to the semifinals here at the North American International Championship. Another impressive victory to add to his resume, finishing in the top four. And that was just a complete blowout. Oh yeah, uh, there was nothing Edward could do there. Uh, congrats to him, by the way. Top eight of the largest ever TCG Masters tournament here, and. Just unfortunately fell a little short to uh, Big Boy Zorark. Yeah, great performance by both players, but that match was similar to the first match we watched with uh, Tord and Aaron. Just that was not even close. Jimmy was just in control that entire time. In fairness, game two 